How do I look? Do I look good? It's getting higher, smelling like beer. What's up beautiful people? Today's video is all about the beautiful city of Kiev with its stunning architecture, delicious food, and opportunity for some once in a lifetime experiences. One of the villages that's in the exclusion zone that was evacuated back in May 1986 after the explosion. So, you're planning a trip to the capital of Ukraine and you want to know what the best things to do are? I got you covered. Just don't expect my pronunciation to be perfect. If you're unsure of anything I say, then there's links in the description to everywhere mentioned where you can find the correct spelling and much more information. So let's go. We stayed near Independence Square and I can highly recommend it as it's pretty central to most things you're going to want to see and do. We'll start by walking to one of the most famous sites, St Sophia's Cathedral. This was the first heritage site in Ukraine to be inscribed on the World Heritage List, along with the Kiev Monastery of the Caves, which you'll visit later. Founded over a thousand years ago, St Sophia has mosaics and frescoes from the 11th century, and the complex it sits within has loads of other interesting buildings and exhibits. These include the bell tower, which gives you a completely different view of the cathedral and panoramic views of the city. A short walk from St Sophia's Cathedral is the magnificent St Andrew's Church, a gold and blue Baroque masterpiece. Constructed between 1747 and 1754 by Italian architect Bartolomeo Rostrelli, designer of the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, St. Andrew's is a beautiful interpretation of the Ukrainian five-domed cross-shaped church. The interior is currently closed for renovations, but you can still pay to enter the grounds for a closer look and an apparently beautiful view. We opted to take our photos from outside the grounds and found our way to a different, free viewpoint. To do this, you'll need to walk behind the church and find your way onto a path with people displaying their works of art. You can then walk further along and stop at different observation platforms for views over the city beneath you. As you make your way further around, you'll come past the Kiev funicular and come to Vladimirska Hill, a relaxing park. As you walk through, you may be lucky and see someone playing an instrument you've never seen before. From the park, you can walk along the glass bridge and see the Friendship Arch, opened in 1982 to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the USSR and celebrate the 1500th anniversary of Kiev as a city. It was probably the busiest place we visited in this otherwise very relaxed city, with plenty of people enjoying the views over the river and others having photo shoots. It offers the opportunity to see people bungee jumping off a bridge and others jet skiing and sailing. It's also a perfect place to scout out some of the nearby beaches on the river you may want to visit on a more relaxed day. In the evenings, the city really comes alive and the area around Independence Square is thronging with people. Krushatik Street is the main street of the city and often included in the list of the top 20 most expensive shopping streets in Europe. If you're visiting on a weekend, then it's completely closed to traffic and reserved for pedestrians. You'll find markets and street performers galore. <laughs> There's plenty of good restaurants in the city where you'll be able to try the eponymous chicken Kiev and other national dishes such as salo, a white pork fat, or borscht, a beetroot soup. Alternatively, you can head to one of many restaurants serving other cuisines. We tried a Georgian restaurant and it was amazing. But our favourite place to eat was back up near St Sophia's Cathedral, a place called Spotty Catch, which described itself as a saucy metropolitan restaurant. It had a lot of delicious options, including some blue and yellow Ukrainian dumplings, and we can vouch for the home craft beer. It's getting higher, and there we go. Alarms are sounding, and is very radioactive. Of course, the thing that's bringing more people to Kiev following the release of the popular HBO drama, Chernobyl, is the city's proximity to the nuclear power plant. We booked our tour to the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone with a company called Solo East, and it was a truly immersive and highly interesting experience. After checking into the exclusion zone and having a safety briefing, you'll explore abandoned villages and find hot spots of radioactivity. Ah, it's over the five well, here. You'll see the new safe confinement for reactor number four and then spend hours in the abandoned town of Pripyat, exploring different areas and learning more about the aftermath of the disaster. We were lucky enough to get to go up a 16 storey apartment block to get a view over the whole abandoned city. It may be the most expensive thing you do while visiting Kiev, at around £65 or $86 per person. 
but for the full day tour at such an incredibly unique place, I definitely recommend it. Following such a full-on day, you'll probably be in need of a more chilled morning. Head back past St Andrew's Church and wander around Old Kiev's cobbled streets, lined by stalls selling souvenirs and other gifts you may want to buy. There's likely to be street performers playing music as you take in the beauty of the art on the sides of buildings and make your way to one of many cafes. For some delicious Ukrainian sweets you can try Lviv handmade chocolate, or maybe somewhere else to sample kvass, a fermented beverage made from rye bread with a low alcohol percentage. Walk to Kontraktova Square where you'll find a ferris wheel and perhaps a local market taking place and you can visit the nearby Ukrainian National Chernobyl Museum if you want to learn even more about the disaster. For the adventurous, you can get a quick bite to eat at Kievska Perepichka, a fast food establishment favoured by locals often with a queue. No need to worry though, it moves quickly as they only serve one thing, perepichka, which is sausage deep fried in dough. It's not sweet though. How come? Jump on the metro and travel to Arsenelna station, the deepest in the world at 105.5 metres below the surface. From here you can walk through the Park of Eternal Glory and find the monument to the unknown soldier and eternal flame, dedicated to all of those who lost lives in World War II. As well as a fantastic view over the city, the park is also where Ukraine's National Museum of the Holodomor Genocide is located. A little walk further is Kiev Pashersk Lavra, or the Kiev Monastery of the Caves. The Lavra has been a preeminent centre of Eastern Orthodox Christianity in Eastern Europe for nearly a thousand years. We were fortunate enough to visit while a wedding was taking place, which made our trip even more special. It's also possible to climb the bell tower, the tallest of its kind when it was built in 1745, and have a look out over the architectural monuments of the complex. Look out for the Motherland Monument, which is dedicated to the Soviet victory over the Nazis in World War II. Check out the caves, in which there's no filming or photography, but there is a selection of mummified bodies. Finish off your trip with a beer in a traditional Ukrainian restaurant, and maybe even wear the hats too. For a little bit more information, or to see some more of this lovely city, then please check out the mini-series of vlogs I created from our time in Kiev. If you've got anything to add, or if you have any questions, then drop a comment down below, or send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. Please like the video if it's helped, and subscribe for more travel-related content. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy your trip. Big love, and it feels good around Kiev. <laughs>